Hi there, my name's Tim Walter. I'm a geomancer and a life coach. What I want to do today actually is to just take you through um, some of the things that I do for my clients when I give them a detailed geomancy report on their house. I'm going to do this with the floor plan uh, of our own particular house. We've moved in here about six weeks ago. So, hello there. I just wanted to interrupt that uh, because that was 18 months ago when I recorded that. Now I do want to say and stress that that was a genuine interrogation of a floor plan for dowsing to illustrate just exactly what was going on in our house at the time, six weeks after we moved in. This is a long video. Um, what I suggest is that you just skip through it to the bits that you find interesting. But if you really want to see how I do the geomancy on somebody's house, then just stick with it. The overall feeling of this house at the moment is it's lovely, absolutely lovely. Um, and I did a, a general clearing of it before we moved in, which is great. Um, so the atmosphere here is fantastic. Uh, but but there is this residual feeling of every task we try to do is really really difficult. It's harder than it need be. So we'll we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm hoping that we'll get some real life examples of the way that the floor plan reflects the the reality of the person that's um, living in the property. So we're just going to uh, see how this goes. And the first thing I need to do actually is to meditate. Uh, briefly to uh, tune in to this floor plan and to this place. It's quite interesting because actually even as I just focus here now I'm getting really strong tinglings um, and a presence, a real presence, a loving presence, a real presence here um, tingling all over, absolutely goosebumps. And this office in particular has been um, a remarkable place to meditate. Uh, we are in the oldest part of the house and this is 500 years old. That inevitably has something to do with the way it feels, of course. But I, we're way out in the countryside here. We're, we're quite remote. Um, and there is a real feeling that the, the life force of nature uh, has a bearing here in, in everything that we're doing as occupiers of this particular house. And part of that life force of nature, of course, is spirit of people, spirit of personality, spirit of all living things that flows across the land. exercise which I always do uh, which is quite important to do and I've asked for the assistance and we're ready to go so we're going to ask so there's 40 or so questions that we're going to ask which is a typical list that I go through for a client and I'm dousing and that's what I'm using to basically emphasize and dousing is a, is a form of intuition which I talk about in other videos. So the first question, are there any ghosts, spirits or trapped souls present within this building? No. They've already been cleared. There are three site guardians for this house, is that correct? There's the guardian energy of personality, there's the spirit of place, and there's the spirit of the house. <clears throat> so I'm getting a negative on the spirit of house, is that correct? Yes. So therefore I'd like to ask some questions about the Guardians. Is the Guardian energy personality, in other words, at Ludlow House, it was a lady called Jane. Here, is it a male or a female entity? Yes. 
because of course uh, they can't answer. Uh, uh, dowsing always gives a yes or no response. So it says a yes, but I was also thinking about Jane. So is the, um, the guardian energy here a, a person? Is it actually my spirit guide? No, it's not. So therefore, is it a male? No, it's a female. Yes. Is it Jane again? No, it's not. Okay. So we have a female guardian energy personality here, which again is very motherly and very ancient um, in terms of her age and her possession, um, her being. She's actually associated with, is she, no, she's not associated with the house. Was she ever incarnate? Yes, she was. Um, I, I hate to say this, but is she actually Mother Mary, uh, Holy Mother Mary? So, uh, okay, well, that's quite, okay, an aspect of her was a good enough way to describe it. Um, and I need to think about what that means to me. So if I'm dousing that Holy Mother Mary of Jesus, basically, um, now is a guardian energy of this house, that to me is fairly bizarre, Once, but I'm used to getting bizarre things, bizarre results. But what that says to me and what was coming through there was that I need to then look at what that means to me. That's the whole point about all of this stuff is it's symbolic, life is symbolic. So what does that mean to me? Mother of Jesus being here as a guardian energy of this space, apart from it being awesome. Okay, so let me just make a note of that. So what I just want to say about that is that clearly the notion that Mother Mary of Jesus might be the guardian energy of this house, if we take that as a realistic, a real scenario, then quite frankly it's, it's ridiculous. Um, so these sort of things really need to be taken as symbolic because otherwise they just don't make sense because I personally in my belief system do not accept that that sort of thing would be possible however if I was doing that for a client what I would be talking about would be let's look at how this relates to you um, from my personal point of view it related very much about the mother figure um, because as I say in the description below the purchase of this house was very much tied up with my mother passing away and so actually to have the guardian energy figure here within the house being represented by perhaps the ultimate mother figure then to me that makes perfect sense and to move on to the spirit of place the spirit of place is like the spirit of genius loci the spirit of the land is the spirit of place happy is there anything we need to do the spirit of place is happy and there's nothing we need to particularly do. The spirit of the house, is the spirit of the house happy? No. Okay. So, the spirit of house isn't happy. The spirit of the house itself, the fabric of the building, isn't happy. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is it because we haven't talked to it since we've moved in? No. Is it because there are things that have been done that it isn't, doesn't understand? Yes. Is it the work that we've done since we've moved in? No. Is it the work that was done by the previous, the previous owner no was it stop ah. so has the spirit of the house actually been unhappy for many many decades is that correct yes so can we go approximately uh, back in time to find out when that the spirit of the house became unhappy about what was being done to it yes we can so do we have to go, let's start from the beginning. The house is approximately, the oldest part of the house is approximately 500 years old. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Therefore, how soon after 500 years ago, in other words, after the house was first built, did the spirit of the house become unhappy and confused and not like what was being done to it? Please tell me. Yes. So more than, uh, more than 100 years after the house was built? No. Oh, so within the first hundred years of the house being built, the spirit of the house became unhappy. Now, why was that? Because it changed its use. There was something about the ownership. The person that built the house didn't stay here very long. Is that correct? And therefore, many changes were made to that. No, not many changes. The person that lived here second, yes, did things here that the house did not approve of. Is that correct? Did not approve of is a moral judgment and therefore it can't answer it. Is that correct? Yes. 
There were changes made to the house within the first 100 years of existence that the house did not approve of. Is that correct? No. That the house was confused by? Yes. The house wasn't consulted on. Is that correct? Yes. Did it, has anybody consulted on? Yes, they have. Right. Okay. So it's, people have consulted the house since. Right. Okay. But in the first 100 years, the house was not consulted. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Are we able to rectify this problem with the spirit of the house? Does the spirit of the house acknowledge that there is a problem here? No. So therefore, all you have done is to give us information about the house? Yes. Is there a way that we can help the spirit of house feel happier? Yes. By simply talking to the house itself? Yes. Is there anything that the house itself, the fabric of the house, needs us to do? Yes. We need to change the windows? Yes. We need to change the roof? No. Okay, is the house happy with the heating system that we've put in? Yes, very. Is the house happy with the hot water system that we've put in and the cold water supply? Yes, okay. Is the house happy with all the work that we've done so far? No, okay, because we've still got leaks, yes. And you, the house is sorry about these leaks, yes. Well, this is not your fault. Yes, okay, so, uh, okay, which one we'll find out shortly. So, that, so basically it's saying, the house is saying that it is sorry that it was giving leaks which is still his here in the office at the back um, but I will find out more about that as we go through the report is what they're saying okay so do we need to look at the human manifested forms lower animal animal life. Life. are there any lower animal life forms attached to are there any, are there any cords forms? yes there are okay so uh, is this psychic cords that I have yes okay so is this a psychic cord to my mother yes is this from my mother no is this from me to my mother yes okay my mother recently departed uh, life and I think I've probably still set up a, yeah, I've still uh, got a detrimental accord for, attached to her, so I need to just sort that out, which I will do in the healing session uh, a little later. Okay. So now we look at the actual building, which is perhaps more relevant for what we're doing today. Now, water veins, are there, we're looking for detrimental aspects um, that show up on the floor plan. Um, I'm only looking for detrimental ones because that's what we adjust and change and harmonise and these are the things that hold people back in life. So here we ask, are there, is there any underground water uh, that's detrimentally affecting the property and or the people within uh, Stallthwaite Hall? No, so there's no underground water uh, adversely affecting anybody in the thing and no underground water at all affecting the house detrimentally. Okay, I'm quite surprised by that but that's good. Geological fault lines we move on to. Okay, so are there any detrimental influences being associated with the fabric the of the building yeah. safe and sound? And uh, is the house adequate? affected yes. by technopathic stress? Are the occupants affected by technopathic stress? Yes. Okay, so we're going right. to show where these technopathic stress items are. They'll be indicated on the floor plan. Now, what I do for, uh, for my own benefit, really, uh, more than anything else, and it's just become a habit now, is I actually shut my eyes and I tend to twist the floor plan, so I don't know whether it's the right way up or upside down. I know it's approximately horizontal. And what I'll say is I'm going to go along the... Um, OK, that's... <laughs> I think that's not horizontal, so that now is horizontal. I'm going to go along the horizontal axis with my finger and the... Uh, pendulum will uh, indicate when to stop and then I will do the vertical axis and that will be the point where the first technopathic stress item is situated. I'm using the ground floor plan uh, but it could be on the first floor. First of all I want to actually identify how many items uh, creating technopathic stress for us are there within the house. One, two, three, three items. Okay so the three items, I'll just open my eyes, the three items. So I'm just going to turn that again just, this is just so that I don't really know where I'm going along the horizontal axis first. Okay, here we go. There it is. So there. Now, of course, I have to open my eyes when I want to make a mark. And I, I know exactly what this is because I've just, I've just... So now I'm going to go down on the vertical axis and it's right there, which is there. Okay, and I know what that is. That is the... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put that right there. <coughs> Pretty sure that that is the um, satellite dish. 22. Satellite dish, right. Next one. So I'm just going to turn the map. It all gets a little bit kind of like blind man's buff. It's 
get it horizontal. I'm going to go across you do the horizontal first. So here we go. Looking for the second technopathic object. Is it here? No. About there. Oh. <laughs> now I'm confused because I've gone. I've gone horizontally across. Okay, so horizontal. I've gone. So I'm oh no, just going to go up. Show me where it is. So this is interesting because this is just outside the front door. Oh! Okay. This is, this is actually, I'm going to put it here anyway. I'm going to indicate it right here because this is where it was. But I think, I think I know what that's referring to. 22, 2. Um, is this referring, is this actually referring to the porch? This is referring to the porch, so this is all the, all this is where the, see I'm, I'm a bit off on this one actually. I will go and look outside the porch because there may be a cable going in or a mains lit cable coming in from that corner. But I think it's to do with all the circuit balls and stuff that are in the porch. Okay. Negative, is it a negative just for me? No, but for both of us. Third item. Going across on the plan. Looking for the technopathic stress, please. And then going down again. Same place. Yeah. Interesting. So, are there? Uh, is the property? Is that all on technopathic stress? Right. So, is the property affected by human interference lines? No. Is there any influence of black magic within the property? Yes. Okay. So there has been black magic practiced here within the property. Okay. How many? places within the property are still affected by the historical uh, practice of black magic. Is it one? Is it more than one? No, just one. Okay, so let's find that. We'll use the black because the black is uh, appropriate. Now here we're talking about, are we talking about ceremony? Are we talking about Ouija board? We're talking about Ouija board. So black magic here can be anything from Ouija board to a full coven ceremony. So here we go, this is a Ouija board, this is probably by, was it by the previous occupants? No, by somebody before the last 40 years, yes. Okay, so, looking for the one item, going to use a grid system, going across the horizontal grid first. Doing it again because I actually was distracted and thinking about the garden. It said no, so it's in the house. Okay. So, um, I was getting that it's that it's that it's upstairs. Is that right? Upstairs. So it's upstairs in the big bedroom. Now it has been cleared. So, but I'm going to um, itemise this. And once we clear that properly, then that'll all be gone and good. Okay. Right. Fine. When I say clear it properly, I mean I've done a high level clearing. But uh, this is stuff that was relevant for today. So that's absolutely fine. 25, okay. So, is the property affected by any curses and spells? No. Is the property built or has anything to do with any con deconsecrated or sacred ground? No. Are there any spirit lines affecting this property? No. Are there any earth energy channels affecting this property? No. Are there any uh, detrimental earth energy lines going through this property? Yes. How many detrimental earth energy lines go through this property, please? Is it one, two? It's two. Okay, so we're going to go for three. Two, three. We're going to go for green, and we're going to mark on here two detrimental earth energy lines. 
So we're going to look at these now and we're going to go, oh, okay. So we're going to go, okay, okay. Okay, <clears throat> interestingly enough, um, I get the feeling of the office. Oh, okay, so I'm getting another, another line there. So I've got, uh, let's go through that again. That's there. Right, so do does that flow down through this wall? Okay, it does. There. Does it go in, does it actually circle there? So we actually get, oh, does it go straight to that one? No, does it go via that one? Yes. That's a detrimental earth energy line going through there. That's what I should be doing. So it's going to be something like that. Ah, okay, so is this a, is this a, a guy in a work box? Is this a spiral? No, it's not. But that goes something like that. I mean, broadly speaking, through there. Should, can't go at right angles. That's not a right angle. No, you're right. Okay, but something like that. Okay. So that's the same place. Right, okay, so that. And then we're going to go on the vertical. No, we're not. Sorry, I do beg your pardon. That's what it's trying to... I'm being silly. So, yes, it's saying. So that's the point, and then I've got to do... Where does that energy line go through? Does it go through this wall? Does it go through this wall? There. So actually, it does just cut that one. It does come straight through here. So, does that line actually, does that line actually bend like that? Yes, it does. Does that line go on there? <coughs> I don't know why. But it gives us a point there, which is just in the living room, which is a little bit detrimental. Uh, so, so <coughs> I'm quite surprised by that. Um, because I didn't expect to find earth energy lines that were a problem. Um, there is quite a lot of negative feeling about the bathroom downstairs. Uh, just it's not, it's not great. It's just decoration-wise. So I suppose those might be reflecting that. Earth energy lines tend to capture human emotion and can be influenced by it. Okay. So um, earth energy spirals, negative earth energy spirals, detrimental earth energy spirals. Are there some? Yes. Can you tell? Show me where these are, please. How many are there to start with? Are there more than one? Are there two? Are there three? Are there four? There are four. The detrimental earth energy spiral doing the grid system, please. Just up in there. Going down there. There. So there's one there, right by the fireplace. <coughs> in the ground floor, it uh, goes up through the base floor, so that is uh, clockwise, yes. So that's 31. I want to find another one. There. And right there. Is clockwise, no, it is anti clockwise. Okay, right, okay. 32, I know what that is. Okay, oh, interesting. Right, okay, so Dutchman Clerth energy spirals, please. Level with that. Is this clockwise? Okay, so 
We're getting we're getting close now to the end. Um, I'm surprised that we've got these lines, but I'm I'm okay with it. Um, are these anything to do with making tasks difficult? No. Okay, so we're going to plough on. Uh, is the house affected by any detrimental ley lines or holy lines or shamanic lines? Is the house affected by any reversal points? Is the house affected by any sinkholes? Are there any emotional energy points? Yes. How many are there? Ten? Yes. Are there more than ten? No. Okay, there are ten. Mm. Okay. So... That's ten points, and all of those are actually on the ground floor. Uh, interestingly, a lot of those are actually where I feel um, less than 100% happy about the way the house is, I suppose. Not in the sitting room as such, but in the other places. So. We'll clear those when we do the clearing anyway. Okay, so that's all of the emotional energy points. Yes, it is. Then the power objects. Are there any power objects, detrimental possessions that are adversely affecting us? No. Are there historical place memories that are detrimental to this house? No. Or to the occupants? No. Are there any interdimensional, interdimensional place memories? No. Are there any trapped elementals? Yes. Okay, there are trapped elementals. <clears throat> are these responsible for making jobs difficult around the house? Right, trapped elementals. Trapped elementals. It didn't actually occur to me that they might be trapped. That's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, I felt that it was influence of elementals because it's very typical of what might you know, it, it, if you call on elementals to help you, tasks get done easily. Therefore, it makes sense that tasks would be difficult if you were kind of fighting, fighting elementals. Didn't occur to me that they'd be trapped. And here it is. I go through this all the time for clients and it never occurred to me. So what have we got? We've got earth elementals. Have we got air elementals? Have we got water elementals? We've got air, we've got earth and water, and have we got any fire elementals trapped? No. So we've got earth elementals trapped. Right, okay, so how many earth elementals are trapped? More than ten? No. More than five? Yes. Five, six, seven. We've got seven earth elementals trapped. Bless them. How many water elementals have we got trapped, please? Just three? Just three. Okay. okay. So, are there any trapped tree spirits? No. Are there any trapped animal spirits? No. No. Okay. And then, basically, that's it. Very, very quick run through. I would normally spend longer and would be writing down more notes and would be interrogating in more detail. But fundamentally, uh, what we found is some sluggish detrimental earth energy and some. Uh, layering of emotional uh, stress points, if you like, uh, which is caused by arguments and uh, misunderstandings and um, people falling over, actually, in a couple of instances here. What I do now is basically uh, will, I will sit in meditation and I will ask the management uh, upstairs to clear this, reset the energies in this space, fill it with love and light and compassion and the whole building will feel a lot lighter. And that's it. I'll let you know how we get on with other stuff and whether jobs and tasks become easier. Hopefully they will. Cheers.